Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be doing the highly requested tank item alignment chart. A lot of you guys have been asking for this one in the comments, so I thought I'd get it out pretty quickly. If you haven't seen my previous alignment chart videos so far, uh, I'll give a quick explanation of how this works before we start. As always, it is a little bit different to your typical like tier list format. So basically, we have two axes here. Uh, from left to right, it's early to late game. So if you move towards the left of the chart, it's going to be a more early game item that you can be building in your first few slots. And then if you move towards the right hand side, it's going to be something you're getting much later in your build. And then the Y axis, top to bottom, uh, if you're closer to the top of the chart, it's going to be you're buying this item more for the base stats that it gives you. And then more towards the bottom of the chart, you're more utility focused. It'll be giving you some extra effects, you know, bonus healings, crowd control, uh, shield reduction, that kind of stuff. And uh, there's going to be a lot of items, as you can see here. Uh, the tank item one is going to be by far the largest, since it's not segregated into physical and magical, really, in the same way that physical and magical damage uh, is. So yeah, it's probably going to be a bit of a longer video and probably a bit more of a chaotic chart, but hopefully you guys enjoy this one, give you some info on when and where you should be building these tank items. So yeah, without further ado, let's just jump in with Absolution. So for Absolution, I feel like it's a little bit more of a late game pickup. You know, this isn't usually something you're going to be going like super early unless maybe it's a really niche scenario where like you maybe want to counter Ares ultimate or something like that, you might buy this. Uh, but typically this comes online a little bit later in your build when like team fights start happening and you might need that cleanse on some of your backliners to keep them safe from stuff like Ares ult. Uh, so probably somewhere around here. And then in terms of stats and utility, it's relatively balanced, but I'll put it a little bit further down simply because I feel like if you're buying Absolution, you're buying it basically for that effect. The stats on it are okay, but uh, there's probably better options in terms of just getting raw magical defense uh, with better stuff for you. But if you want this effect and you need this effect, you can use it well. Uh, you're definitely buying it for the utility in that regard. Abyssal Stone, an interesting item that doesn't see a whole lot of play, but potentially could be very strong with that cooldown reduction increase. Um, in terms of early to late game, I feel like you're buying this one around the middle of your builds, to be honest. It's not something you're going to rush early particularly, especially because it has both kinds of defenses. You know, maybe on support, because on support you're fighting um, both types a lot more than you are in solo, where you're usually just going to be fighting one type for the most part until the late game. Um, and so yeah, probably around the middle of your build. And then in terms of stats and utility, it's pretty balanced as well. The stats on it are very competitive. I think it's 40 of each defense and 300 health. Um, a lot of these stone of binding tree, like druid stone tree items, just have really good stats on them in general. But we'll skew it a little bit more towards utility, since it does have that pretty useful effect of um, anti-cooldown reduction on enemies. It's not just a pure like stat bomb. Agdruid's Fury, um, again, decent base stats, um, but the effect is mostly what you're buying this one for, I feel like, uh, that bonus damage, bonus uh, magical damage now, no longer true damage on um, your basic attack after like taking a bunch of damage. Uh, you're probably buying this a bit later in your build as well, uh, normally you're going to want this effect to come online when you're like fighting in big team fights, taking a lot of damage so you can get the big benefit from it. As a learning for this item, this isn't really that great. So we'll probably put it somewhere around over here. And then, yeah, in terms of stats and utility, probably somewhere around there as well. Uh, decent utility in the fact... It's weird because I've been using, like, damage and utility on the damage item alignment charts. And this is damage, but I'm putting it more towards utility because this is stats and utility. And that damage is extra utility that's not just stats. Berserker's Shield. So, generally, a relatively early game pickup. You know, you're mostly going to be buying this on your auto-attacking solo laners in a physical matchup. So, your Bologna's, your Amaterasu's, if you're playing into, like, a warrior or an assassin or something like that. Uh, usually p built, like, first or second item even, so pretty early in the game for the most part. You can pick it up a bit later if you needed other stuff, like, at the start of your build, but it's mostly built as, like, an early game item. And then in terms of stats or utility, this is basically just a big stat bomb. You know, it's a bunch of attack speed, bunch of prots, and then uh, more attack speed and damage mitigation when the effect activates. It's basically just purely stats. Breastplate of Regrowth, probably in a similar place to Berserker Shield in terms of early and late game. This is usually your first item, maybe your second item after something else uh, that you might want to get online in the laning phase for a solo laner. Even on some supports, you can get away with building this as well, like Bacchus for example. And in that case, it usually is second item after your Prophetic or your Thebes, or maybe even after both, potentially. Uh, but yeah, pretty early game item overall. And then in terms of stats utility, I'll skew it a little bit towards stats, but the utility is definitely there with this item. You know, if you're buying this, you, you are buying it for that big movement speed burst, you know, on your Herculeses and your Bacchuses and stuff like that, uh, to kind of, like, get in and engage. But it is still very competitive on the stats, since they reworked it from being Shield of Regrowth into Breastplate of Regrowth, you know, now coming with Physical Protection and Mana, like all the other Breastplate items, so still very very good stats wise it's the reason you can rush it in lane and still be like decent in terms of trades uh despite having that really powerful passive effect so we'll drop it like that breastplate of valor 
Um, usually built in a similar place to Breastplate of Regrowth, I would say. You know, maybe if you're not a Regrowth user, you might want to go Breastplate instead. Um, decent utility with the 20% cooldown reduction. Comes with a lot of mana as well. Um, but also just, like, generally pretty, like, stat heavy. And then we'll put it a little bit to the right of Regrowth. I feel like Breastplate, you can kind of get away with building a little bit later in your build. Whereas Breastplate of Regrowth, you usually want to get it online relatively quickly on the gods that use it. Because it's really powerful for them. Cannoneer's Curus, another one that doesn't really get used all that much, kind of like an early game support pickup, I suppose, and you do want to be getting this online early because it has that bonus gold generation, which is much more valuable in the early game to get your core items online than it will be in the late game. And then, yeah, in terms of stats and utility, it skews a bit towards utility purely because of that gold generation. Uh, that's a really powerful effect that you can get, and the stats on it aren't great, to be fair, compared to a lot of other options that you can go in the early game, like Gauntlet of Thebes. Contagion... So, usually built relatively early, but doesn't have to be. So, I will put it a little bit further towards the late game, purely because you can really get Contagion kind of at any point in the game when you think you'll need it against, like, big healing or big CC or both. Uh, often built, you know, in specific matchups in solo lane in, as, like, a first item, you know, against your Herculeses, your Tears and stuff like that, maybe even your Guan Yus, where you need that anti-heal and the passive damage from uh, getting CC'd. That's, like, usually where you would build it kind of early in your build. But as I said, you can get away with building it late in your build as well, so I might just put it somewhere closer to the middle. And then in terms of stats and utility, uh, it's got some utility, for sure. It is mostly for the stats, but uh, the utility of, like, both those passives having, like, extra um, healing reduction and extra damage as well. Uh, pretty pretty good there, so we'll drop it actually a little bit uh, further down on the utility axis. Dawnbringer, another one that they introduced in year 10 that hasn't really seen a whole lot of play. They've buffed it a little bit, so maybe it'll see a bit more play now, but um, I feel like this is generally a bit more of a late game pickup. The stats on it aren't amazing for the cost, so you're not really going to be rushing this in the lading phase or anything like that. I believe it's also mixed defense, or not mixed defense, but health, which basically is mixed defense. Um, so you're not really going to be rushing it in the landing phase of solo, and it's not really a support item either. So generally, you're buying this a bit later in your build, especially because the passive is percentage-based as well. So the more power and protections you have in your build, the more value you're going to get from Dawnbringer's passive effect. And then in terms of stats and utility, it's basically just, just stats. The stats on it aren't amazing, but uh, the passive basically just is stats. You just ult it and you get extra stats. So I don't think that really counts as utility in my book, you know. Same thing with Berserker Shield. It has a passive that you might want to class as utility, but the passive is just to give you more stats. And so I'm going to still put it relatively high up on the stats axis. Emperor's Armor... Generally something you're going to build a bit later. Um, in the laning phase, you're not necessarily looking to like super push down towers or super defend your own towers. It's usually kind of like in those mid to late game fights where like towers start getting pushed pretty heavily that you might want to pick up an Emperor's Armor. And then it's very heavy on the utility. Uh, if you're ever buying Emperor's Armor, you're buying it for that effect. The base stats on it are not very good compared to a lot of other physical defense options that you could go for. And so we'll put it um, somewhere probably around here-ish. Erosion, another new item that hasn't really seen a whole lot of play. There's usually just not enough shields for you to warrant getting this. Uh, but in certain games, you know, against your Mojas, against Nikes, against Odins, maybe they have a few shells or something like that, uh, you might want to be able to pick this up. Uh, the stats are very competitive. Uh, as we mentioned with Abyssal Stone, all the Druid Stone items have, like, really competitive base stats. Both kinds of defense and health is a really good way to get, like, super tanky, super quick. Uh, so the stats are pretty good. Uh, the utility on it is also pretty good, though, you know, with that extra shield reduction. So, honestly, we'll probably drop it somewhere in the middle, and then, yeah, it's a built a little bit more late game, I would say, because, uh, generally, you're going to be wanting the big team fights to start happening, where the shells come out, and the big Yamoja 2s come out, and stuff like that. Um, especially if you're building this on a solo laner, you know, usually, maybe if you're playing into Nike, you might want to go this a little bit earlier in your build, but that's a pretty specific scenario. I feel like, generally, you're going to be building Erosion later on, when the big team fights start happening, and all the big shields start coming out. Fabless Hoops! Um, pretty interesting one. I feel like Fabless generally comes online a little bit later, but not super late. You know, the gods that use Fabless, you're usually going to want to get it online sort of in the middle of your build, third or fourth slot, maybe a little bit later than that. And in terms of stats utility, uh, the earrings, much like the Druid Stone Tree, a lot of the new items that have been introduced just have kind of really good stats on them. Fabless is no different. Uh, I think it has like a bunch of health, bunch of protections, 10% cooldown as well. So really good stats on it as well. But the passive effect is also super good. You know, giving those extra shields to your teammates. <laughs> Maybe you want to pick up an erosion if there's a lot of Fabless hoops going on on the enemy team. Who knows? Um, uh, we'll skew it ever so slightly towards stats just because it does have really good base stats. And uh, the effect... 
The effect is also really good though. Maybe I should just put it in the middle. I feel like this is really competitive on stats and also has good utility as well. Frostbound hammer. So I, I haven't mentioned this, but I'm sure you've realized I'm including all the bruiser items in the tank item video. I'm not going to be making a separate video for bruiser items simply because there isn't that many of them anymore. They removed a lot of the bruiser items. It's mainly just like the hammer tree. Um, and I mean, yeah, that's basically it. You could argue the Druid's Dawn Tree are kind of bruiser items because a lot of them offer like extra damage or extra pen or whatever. But for the most part, it's just the Hammer Tree that are bruiser items now. Oh, and, and um, Berserkers and Gladiator Shield, I would count on that as well. But yeah, not, not enough bruiser items for me to make their own alignment chart. So I'm just including them in the tank one here. So for Frostbound Hammer, kind of got gutted. No one really built it anymore. But um, in terms of where you would want to build it, I feel like it's kind of early-ish side of mid game. Like usually if you want Frostbound Hammer, you're going to be getting it online after you call like defense stats as a solo laner so maybe you're going like berserker shield into shoguns into frostbound on like your balonas and stuff like that uh, and then in terms of stats and utility uh the stats are pretty horrible on it uh but the utility also isn't great because the passive got kind of gutted uh probably somewhere in the middle ish uh you do like that that slow it is nice to have but putting it on a 10 second cooldown kind of gutted the item a little bit we'll probably drop it somewhere in the middle there Gauntlet of Thebes, uh, very early game focused, of course, you have to stack it. Um, if you're going Thebes on supports, you're usually going at first item, maybe second if you want to get Prophetic into Thebes. So, like, this has become a little bit more late game in that regard, since some, sometimes you want to go Prophetic before this and you'll get it in second slot instead of first. And also, occasionally, you might see solo laners pick up Gauntlet of Thebes in fifth or sixth slot if they just want to stack it up quickly in a couple of team fights and get it online because it's very efficient defense-wise. Uh, 55 of each prots, I believe, and 300 or 250 health. Um, really good, like, stats for the cost. And so, yeah, we'll move it ever so slightly over for that reason. And in terms of stats and utility, it's uh, mostly stats. There is a little bit of utility in terms of giving those extra protections to your teammates. Um, but really, it's just like a small protection aura of like 10 or 15 protections or something like that. Um, for the most part, you, you're buying this just because it's the big stat bomb that you need as a support in the early game to survive, basically. Genji's Guard, uh, usually built relatively early, can be built late as well. It's one of those items where like if you need some extra magical defense, you can absolutely build this fifth or sixth item and not really be too sad about it. Usually, I feel like this kind of comes online either as your first item defense against a magical solo laner or like as your uh, first magical defense item when you're against a physical solo laner. So you might be going like your standard physical defense into something else into like Genji's Guard in third slot maybe. So probably somewhere around the middle, maybe slightly skewed towards early game. And then in terms of stats and utility, uh, it's mostly stats. Uh, it has a little bit of utility in the cooldown reduction passive, but for the most part, you're just buying this for the big health and the magical defense that you can get at the laning phase. Gladiator Shield, so probably a little bit to the right of Berserker Shield in terms of early and late game. Uh, Berserker Shield, you kind of are a bit more incentivized to rush it. Gladiator Shield, of course, the effect scales off of how many protections you have, so building it a bit later is absolutely fine. Uh, this used to be like a rush. People don't rush it as much anymore. Usually you have other things you'll want to go into, like Breastplate of Regrowth or maybe even Breastplate of Valor or something like that. Uh, so you can get away with building this a little bit later than you used to. It used to be like a rush, and you still can rush it, but it's not as efficient now. Uh, mostly because it doesn't have physical power anymore, which is a big reason you're rushing it to get that extra like wave clear and extra like damage on your autos for the solo lane laning phase and boxing and stuff like that. When it lost the power, it became a little bit less viable as a rush. And then in terms of stats and utility, um, it's decent stats wise, decent utility wise as well. Uh, probably somewhere in the middle. We'll maybe skew it a little bit towards stats. The stats on the item are good, but to be honest, you are mostly buying it for the utility passive, but it's not really that strong. Uh, actually, thinking about it, maybe let's just put it in the middle. I feel like Glad Shield is very much in the middle in terms of what it provides you and based on like stats and utility. So Heart Ward Amulets, usually something you're going to be going a bit later. Uh, there's usually not as much magical damage on the map as there is physical damage. And so you're not going to be going this like in second slot in support or anything like that. It's usually like third slot or fourth slot that this will start to come online. Uh, a lot of solo laners as well, uh, like the Amulet of the Stronghold Glyph, where you can go like triple physical defense into this glyph and you get about 105 uh, or more protections just from this one item. And so pretty good for solo laners in the late game for that reason as well. And then in terms of stats and utility, it's mostly just a big stat bomb, especially when you consider the glyph for solo laners where you're getting 105, 110 defense plus 250 health. Uh, really good for that reason, but does have a little bit of utility in the MP5 and uh, magical protections that you can give to your nearby teammates. And potentially if we're considering uh, Amulet of Silence as well, that also has a good amount of utility with the silence on that glyph there. So we'll move it down a little bit. Lotus Sickle. 
probably around a mid-game item, I would say, on a lot of your supportive healers, maybe even on some mid lane healers if you're feeling like you need a little bit of defenses, but you know, your Yumojas, your Sylvanases, your Terras, they like this item a lot. Uh, stats utility wise is pretty good stats and of course the effect applies to you as well but a little bit of utility as well and then it gives your ex your teammates uh, those extra defenses. Magi's Blessing um, probably doesn't really even belong in the tank item one this is mostly built on squishies but I suppose it is still a tank item it's just one you would build on squishies as like a single defense item to get that um, bubble to shield yourself. Uh, usually built pretty late game. Uh, usually this is like a fifth or sixth slot pickup on your squishies. Uh, supports occasionally buy this if you're getting really focused out. Maybe you're immobile like a Sylvanas or a Ymir and you're just getting really hard focused by like Hercules 2-1-ing you or something like that. You might want this. Uh, but mostly built on squishies in the late game, fifth or sixth slot kind of thing. And then in terms of stats and utility, it's, it's basically just bought for the utility. The stats on this item are pretty horrible. They did... Uh, change it recently to make the stats much better. I think it has 10% cooldown now and more more defenses than it used to have. So the stats are a little better than they used to be, but really you're just buying this for the effect. You know, if you're getting hardcore CC'd and focused out in team fights, you might want to pick up a Magi's. Mail of Renewal. Uh, so a while ago was pretty popular as like a first item rush even before Gauntlet of Thebes. Generally built a little bit more early game, but you can get away with going it a little bit later as well. Uh, stats and utility wise, um, does have some solid utility with that healing passive. Um, stats on it are okay, but not like best in slot or anything like that. You do pay a little bit of stats for that utility effect. Uh, so we'll probably drop it somewhere around here. Manticore Spikes. Uh, very efficient stats wise. Um, as I said before, with Fabless Hoops, the Earring Tree um, is one of those newer trees that just has really, really good stat spreads. Uh, you're never really too sad buying Manticore Spikes just because it has like I think they nerfed it down to 35 of each defense, not 40, but 35 of each and 250 or 300 health, however much this has, is still, like, really efficient. So, yeah, solid stats. Um, Utility-wise, does have that extra damage that you can boost um, either your teammates or yourself when you hit those hard crowd controls. And then early late game, I feel like probably around where I've got it, actually. Like, around sort of after the midpoint of your build is when you're going to start looking at Manticore Spikes. You don't usually rush this as, like, an early game item, to be honest. It's usually something you'll get online a little bit later. Mantle of Discord, usually a more late game item. Uh, you're not really picking this up. It's kind of similar to Magi's Blessing in a way, in that if you're getting hardcore focused out when you drop below however much health it is, 25 or 30% or something, uh, you get that big, like, stun everyone around you, CC immune, and you can kind of get out or continue doing what you're doing. So definitely a more late game item for that reason. Uh, also relatively expensive. I think they've reduced the cost of it over time, but uh, still a relatively expensive item compared to other options. And then stats utility wise, uh, it's pretty balanced, I would say. Uh, you like that passive that can help you get out of sticky situations, has a bit of cooldown, um, but still just like good stats in general as well. The stats aren't amazing considering it has no health and just comes with defenses, so maybe we'll skew it slightly towards the utility, but uh, not too much. Midguardian Mail. Wait, is Midguardian Mail still in the game? Why do I feel like they removed Midguardian Mail? Or am I thinking of Nemean? Maybe I'm thinking of Nemean. Uh, Regardless of if this thing's still in the game, uh, I haven't seen anyone build it in seven years, which is probably why uh, <laughs> probably why I'm thinking it might not be in the game. If it still is, I'll place it regardless. Uh, you can let me know down below. So the stats on it are horrible. This is uh, one of the least efficient base stat items in the game. Um, it has some. It has like a combination of health and physical defense, so it does make you kind of tanky towards physicals. But uh, the overall stats on it are pretty bad and you can get much better options for the price. Um, you're mainly looking at the utility uh, for this. That obviously really strong against especially high attack speed like kin size or fast attack chain gods like Erlang, Kali, uh, maybe Bakasura or something like that. Gods that are going to be auto attacking you repeatedly to take you down. This item's really good because uh, especially melee gods because they can't stick to you if you've got Megadia male procking on them all the time. And yeah, as I said, the stats aren't great, so I feel like you're mostly buying this for that utility effect. And then in terms of early late game, I feel like it skews a little bit late game as well. Uh, early game, you're not going to need this that much. This is mainly for when those like hyper carry like ADCs or Kali's or Bakasura start really coming online. You might need this to like survive their dives in the late game. Mystical Mail, uh, generally a pretty early game item. Obviously, it does flat damage on the passive, so like the later the game goes, that flat damage is going to be less and less valuable, but if you're rushing it like first item in the solo lane laning phase, it can help you out a lot with wave clear and winning trades and stuff like that. The stats on it are terrible. Uh, a lot of the stats, uh, other than sovereignty, on this tree are like really bad, and you're mainly building them for the effect, so it's probably on a similar place to Megadian Mail in terms of stats and utility. And then it's very early game. I don't see any reason to build Mystical Mail outside of first slot. It really is like a first slot wonder of an item. Like, building this late game, the aura just isn't going to do enough when it's mitigated by pros. It's going to be doing like 20 damage to backliners by the time they've got like support auras around them and stuff like that. 
Uh, for reference, getting 100 prots halves damage you take. So if the if the backliner has 100 prots, which is reasonable with a lot of the support auras that are going around right now and the buffs to base protections that they did, uh, this effect is just going to be cut in half and doing like 20 damage to them. It's just not worth it at that point. It's really an early game soul in laning phase item only, pretty much. Only Hunter's Garb! So in terms of early late game, similar to Genji's Guard, you can kind of get this whenever you want. Um, but with Onis, I wouldn't recommend rushing it as like your initial magical defense against like a magical lane opponent in solo because you're not going to be getting the full value of that passive. You need to be around three enemies to get the full 9% mitigations. Uh, it might be 12% now. I'm not sure if they buffed it back to 4%. They keep changing it between 4 and 3%. But regardless, you're going to want three people around you to get the maximum amount of value out of Oni Hunter's passive. So we will skew it a little bit more late game for that reason. And then stats and utility wise, uh, it's relatively balanced. I'm not sure whether I should class like that damage mitigation as, as utility. I think for Berserker Shield, I just said it was basically a stat. Does damage mitigation count as utility? Let me know down below. I feel like it's basically the same thing as protections, but better. So probably it counts as stats. I don't know, it kind of gets a bit murky here because like, do you count CCR as utility? Probably, but it is a stat. So yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing here, guys. Um, apparently, I'm supposed to be this pro-alignment chart maker, and I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, let me know down below what you think about that. Should uh, damage mitigation and CCR and CDR be counted as stats on this type of chart, or should they be counted as utility? Um, for now, since I did for Berserker Shield, I'll count them as stats, and so we'll put Oni Hunter's Gab kind of up here. Actually, we'll move it down a little bit, because I feel like treating CCR as a stat is like a bit disingenuous. It's very utility-based CCR to make sure you don't get, like, bursted down and stuff like that. It's a similar effect to what I talked about with Magi's and Mantle, so I think it's fair to move it down a little bit for that reason. Uh, moving into Pestilence. So, kind of like Contagion, you can get Pestilence online at any point if you need that anti-heal. You know, if, like, you're in the solo and laning phase and you've not really had to deal with healing very much, but then you're rotating and the ADC has lifesteal and they have a health support or something, you're going to want to pick up Pestilence even if it's late in your build. It can also be built first against like healing heavy magical solos, you know, maybe into an Arteo or a Sylvanas or something like that. You can definitely get away with that as well. Uh, but probably around the middle of the chart, I would say, in terms of early and late game. And then probably around the middle in terms of stats utility as well. The stats on Pestilence are actually quite good. I think it's 80 of uh, magical defense and 250 health, which will make you very tanky against um, magical characters. But that utility, of course, you know, that up to 55% anti-heal that you can get with this is very good. So maybe I'll skew it a little bit more towards utility. Uh, we are running out of space on this chart, boys, especially towards the middle. Let's move Abyssal Stone a little bit just so you can see it. Uh, as I said, this is going to be the largest alignment chart we've done so far, and so probably going to be a little bit of um, overlapping. But if you're watching the whole video and not just skipping to the end, then you'll know you'll know what my thoughts are on all of these. Um, it's only for the people that skip to the end that maybe this won't make a lot of sense to them. But you know what? That's their problem. You're clearly watching all the way through if you're listening to me right now, so thank you for that. Uh, appreciate that. That will help with my watch time metrics. YouTube will push my videos out more, so you are pog. Uh, let's move into Phalanx, another new year 10 item that really sees no play. It's basically the rework of Tyrannical Plate Helm. Uh, surprise, surprise, minion boosting effects still aren't good, even though, like, the actual effect this gives seems like it should be really powerful. Uh, Stats-wise, it's okay, but you're mostly buying this for the utility effect, and it's also extremely early game. Similar to Mystical Mail, there's not much point in buying this outside of first slot, because... You're not going to need that minion boosting effect in the late game, really. You're looking for this in, like, the solo and laning phase, for example, when you're just, like, trying to boost up your minions and get pressure. I uh, wouldn't really recommend building it in general in terms of, like, the power level of the item, but that is when you would want to build this, is, like, first item in solo lane to get that, like, pressure. And, yeah, it's basically quite heavily utility-based because uh, you're looking for that passive entirely. The stats on it uh, are decent, but you could definitely get better stats from other items. Pridwin... Generally more late game because it's passive scales off of uh, your total protection So you're gonna want to get this online when you've already got a decent amount of protections Otherwise the shield is gonna be absolutely tiny uh, And then in terms of stats and utility the stats on it are pretty horrible It's like 40 of each defenses and then I mean it has 20% cooldown Which again this gets into the debate of whether CDR is utility or stats I, I don't even know at this point uh, my brain is fried <laughs> But um definitely high utility on the passive giving you that shield bonus damage And uh, I guess we'll count CDR as like a little bit of utility so Probably somewhere around, like, here. Uh, let's move Emperor's armor slightly. There we go. Prophetic Cloak, uh, similar place to Thebes. Probably even more early game than Thebes because there isn't an application where you could go Prophetic Cloak in the late game like you can with Thebes on some solo laners and just stack it up really quickly. 
Like, you need to be basically getting prophetic first item, maybe second item if you're on support that can stack it quite easily. Otherwise, you're just not going to get it stacked by the time the game's over, pretty much. Uh, they did boost the power of its, of its stacking to like 8 seconds instead of 10 seconds, so it is a little bit easier to get stacked, but you still want this in your first or second slot, or it's going to come online way too slow. So, definitely a very early game item, probably one of the most early game items there is. You basically have to rush it. And then in terms of stats and utility... It's an interesting one, um, because its stats are completely insane, but it does also have pretty good utility. It gives a large protection aura to your backliners and has damage mitigation and cooldown reduction. Uh, I really want to put this one just up here, purely because the stats on it are absolutely insane. But we'll move it down a little bit, purely because it does have some good utility as well. Uh, just a really solid item once you can stack it up, of course. The best item in the game when you can stack it up, it just takes a long time. Uh, Relic Dagger, usually something you're going to get towards the mid to latter half of your build. Uh, you're usually going to want both your relics online to get the most effect out of this. Uh, usually built on supports as well, so your relics come online a little bit later in the game. Uh, it doesn't really see too much play right now, but yeah, that would be the application where you build it. Um, and in terms of stats and utility, it's mostly for the utility effect. The stats on it are okay. I think it has like 300 health and like uh, maybe some movement speed, CDR I think as well. Uh, the stats aren't terrible, but you're mostly building it for that effect of cooldown reduction on your relics. So you can have those big teamfight impact relics like Shell and stuff. You know, maybe if you're into like a Yamoja Odin comp, we've been seeing a lot of that in the SPL recently. Maybe you want to have your Phantom Shells on a lower cooldown so you don't get trapped in and, and stuff like that. That's the application of Relic Dagger. It's pretty utility focused. Runeforged Hammer. Um... Again, another one of the hammers that got reworked and it just doesn't really see much play, to be honest. I've seen this built relatively early game, uh, but can also be built a bit later as well. Uh, in terms of stats and utility, I guess it's more utility focused. The stats on it are pretty horrible for the cost, so if you ever were going to buy this, you're buying it for that effect. Shogun's Kusari, um, probably a middle of the build to like maybe slightly skewed towards late game. Some auto attacking soul in as like to go this like second slot for example or maybe third slot. Uh, you know your Bolognas, your Amaterasu's and stuff like that. Uh, on supports usually built a little bit later on. You know normally like you're gonna want this when like your ADC is starting to come into the team fights. Maybe you have an ADC in a Merc or an ADC in a Backer or something like that. You're gonna want to get this online like fourth slot in support maybe a little bit earlier in, in um, solo lane. So it's probably somewhere around here. And then in terms of stats and utility, the stats on it are pretty good, uh, but the aura is really the reason you're building this, providing 30% attack speed to all of your allies, so we'll move it slightly down in terms of utility. Um, that is, that is um, Abyssal Stone there, if you guys can still see what's going on in the middle of this chart. I guess let's try and move, um, move Contagion maybe a little bit down. There we go, you can see that's Abyssal Stone, I think. Uh, sovereignty. Generally, a little bit more early game than Heart Ward because it doesn't have that glyph application for solo laners where they can get the big uh, magical defense bomb. And also, usually, physical defense you're going to want to get online earlier as a support because there's more physical damage sources on the map. You know, most games in your typical comp will have three physicals and two magicals, and towers deal physical damage, gold fury deals physical damage. Uh, most things in the game do physical damage, so you usually want to get these kind of auras online before you would get like a Heart Ward, for example. Uh, in the past, there's occasionally been a rush in solo, but they nerfed the HP 5 on it quite substantially, and it's not quite as popular for that application anymore. Uh, generally, this is going to be like a second, maybe third item in support, or something like that. And then in terms of stats and utility, it is mostly stats, but of course does have some of that utility, similar to Heartward Amulet, in that you can basically give your allies extra defenses and HP 5, which is nice. In fact, Heartward should probably be uh, below... Sovereignty because Heartward has that extra application of being a uh, amulet of silence uh, as well Spectral armor usually a more late game pickup uh, usually like fourth fifth sixth slot when you realize that uh, the hunters critting you for 5,000 damage and they also have a mercury in the jungle one punching you you're gonna buy spectral armor uh, And that's usually a little bit lit more later in the build like crit takes a while to come online So you don't need spectral armor in the early game You only need it when like the big crits start coming online and then stats utility wise pretty heavy towards the utility the stats on this item aren't great and you, you're basically building Spectral Armor for the effect. You know, there's no point in building Spectral Armor unless you're against Heavy Crit. Spirit Robe has been made a little bit cheaper recently, so you can afford to go a little bit more early game, but I feel like it's still a middle to like a little bit later, maybe in the build with Spirit Robe. 
And then stats utility wise, it's probably in a similar place to um, Mansword Discord because you, they fill a similar role. I feel like Spirit Robe does it better at the moment, but they have very similar stats and um, Spirit Robe's effect of getting uh, damage mitigation when you get hard CC'd is very similar to Mantle of Discord in that you, uh, if you're getting if you're getting like CC'd down and bursted, Mantle of Discord will proc giving you immunity and allowing you to get out. Spirit Robe fills a, a similar kind of niche. Stone of Binding, uh, another Druid Stone Tree item, very competitive on its stats. Um, I think 40 of each and 250, I believe, on this item. Maybe they've noted down to 35 or something like that. Uh, so very good stats on this. And there is some utility in that you can protection shred your enemies. And so um, making your allies deal more damage, also making you deal more damage. Uh, and then in terms of early to late game... You would think this item would be built a bit more early than it is because it's flat pen, but generally it, it does come online in kind of the middle of your build. I feel like that's mainly because you have more important things to get online in like your tank builds, like supports will be wanting their Prophetic or their Thebes, maybe some other stuff online first before they get this. And then solo laners, this is mixed defense, so it's a little bit inefficient to just go this like as first item against your lane opponent. Uh, usually you're going to want to go dedicated defense against them to get the most value out of it and then maybe go into some mixed defense a little bit later in your build. So pro probably somewhere around there for Stone of Binding. Uh, Stone of Gaia, again, is this thing still in the game? I think it is, but no one builds it. Uh, it's pretty trash. Maybe you assault mains, I suppose. If you're against a few knockups and assault, you might want to buy this. Uh, in terms of early and late game, I feel like you can just kind of build this thing whenever you want. I wouldn't recommend building it, um, but if you wanted to build it, it probably fits almost anywhere in the build. Probably not super early game because you wanna gonna, you're going to want to get some defenses online before you buy this just like only health item. Also percent max health regen, I suppose, so uh, you get a little bit more value the more health you have online, so we'll skew it a little bit towards the late game. And then in terms of stats and utility, I feel like this thing's very utility based. Uh, the base stats on it are pretty horrible. 400 health sounds like a lot, but because it doesn't have any protections of any kind, that 400 health doesn't really go a long way. Uh, it just kind of gets bursted off of you, and so you're mainly looking for this for like the anti-knockup passive and the health regeneration that it gives. Uh, Talisman of Energy is not still in the game, right? I'm pretty sure they removed that to add... Um... Uh, what's the item called? The first one I placed on this tier list, Absolution. I'm pretty sure they removed this to add Absolution, right? Uh, I've already pulled it off of the bottom, so we'll place it anyway, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's not in the game. In terms of early and late game, probably a little bit more late game. Uh, it, it is a minion stacking effect, so you'd think it'd be a bit better in the early game, but usually you're gonna want this, like, for, like, sieging and giving attack speed to you guys so you can, like, siege down Phoenixes and stuff after you've cleared minion waves. Uh, and then in terms of stats and utility, probably somewhere in the middle. And finally, Winged Blade. So stats utility-wise, very utility-heavy. Uh, Winged Blade stats are pretty horrible, but giving that slow immunity to your whole team uh, to potentially like counter big stuff like uh, Cupid ult and things like that, uh, super good for that reason. Uh, probably a little bit more late game for that reason as well, because um, generally you're going to want to get this online when big team fights are happening and your whole team are getting hit by big slows and stuff like that. You're not going to want this when you're just like roaming with like your mid lane or something like that. You're not going to get as much value as you would normally. But yeah, that's the tank item alignment chart, boys. Uh, if you can make sense of the absolute cluster F that is in the middle of um, middle of this chart, then good luck if you've skipped to the end. Uh, I mean, you can see the items, but you'll have to know item icons a little bit to know what's under there. But yeah, if you've watched all the way through, you'll know, what's, you'll know what the haps is and you're a true G. Hopefully this helped you out in terms of knowing when to build certain tank items and, and where they are useful and stuff like that. And yeah, that will be the final alignment chart video. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this series, just quickly updating all these for the current meta with the new items and the reworks to items and all that kind of stuff. And I will catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.